Good morning. It's a Tuesday here on the farm. We've got a little meeting this morning. Um, my John Deere dealer in Green Mark is having a very small combine clinic type thing, I guess, at one of their locations today. Sounds like instead of one big meeting, they're doing a bunch of smaller ones kind of thing. I don't know. I got invited. I'm going to go. So we're going to go. We got to drive to LaGrange, Indiana. It's about an hour west of here. And we'll go see what we can learn about new combines, I guess. We learned a little bit today. Did some learning. Ah, problem is, all it does is make me want to spend money. I did get a hat though that I won't wear, but my boys might. So there's that. It offsets the cost, I think. So now there's just a few uh, little performance things that uh, we might be able to try on our combine to make it do a little better job, maybe. Um, the thing is, I run a. I run a, six, a 780 with an 8-row corn head, so capacity and performance isn't isn't a huge deal for me. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Pretty clear at this point we aren't putting a video out today, but I'll film it anyway because we'll throw it in with tomorrow's so, so dirty in my pocket when it's sweaty out. Anyway, um, we're back from our combine clinic. I've been hanging out in the office because it's hot out here. There's some rain popping to the west. We might get a shower tonight. Uh, but before it gets here, we're gonna take our fuel up to the generator for the irrigation field. I bet we got some stressy looking corn up there today, which is unfortunate, but we're getting over it as fast as we can. We do indeed have some stressy looking corn. It's right here on this end. It varies quite a bit, quite quickly. Um, but yeah, some of it's getting pretty dry. Now in our path out here to the, the riser, this side gets watered, that side doesn't. And this outside row looks kind of okay because it's getting a little extra sunlight and moisture, but look out here, like this has not gotten any water all year. And we're firing way up this plant, way up the plant. And you look at the one across and Totally different story. Looks completely different. Little firing on the bottom, but that's most that's that's an amazing difference right there. And these are nice ears after ear after ear after ear. This is gonna be pretty darn good corn. It's very tall. Cool. I pulled an ear from the irrigated spot and an unirrigated spot, and the total length of the ears, not a lot different. But when you look at the rows around, this is the irrigated one. That's 18 around, getting some kernel depth to it. That one is 14 around. Bigger kernels or wider kernels, but not quite as deep. Uh, you can also see the milk line here is probably two thirds. We'll talk about this more later this week, but basically right at the tip of my finger there where this one is just starting to form a milk line. Can't really even see one yet. Um, well, I guess it's this half you can see a little better. So yeah, the irrigation is making a difference. It's making a big difference. Are we gonna get to 300? I don't know, it's tough to say. It's possible. There are spots where it uh, certainly could happen and probably will in spots. Uh, I don't know if I'll get a strip, an uh, 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 entry, contest entry that will go 300, but we're going to do what we can. It'll be close. Sure looks like it's going to rain. There's some thunder. It's coming this way. Eh, we'll see. Just checking out the garden a little bit. The sunflowers are done. Time to harvest some seeds if we're going to harvest them because they're all going to fall out real fast. And I don't even know when the right time to pick pumpkins is. There's a vine over there with some big jack-o'-lantern type pumpkins that it's dying off, so they're probably ready. These butternut squash out here, they, I don't know, they're probably ready. There's hundreds of pumpkins out here. Maybe a thousand, maybe thousands. I don't even know, there's a lot of pumpkins. Standing out here waiting for it to rain and that deer come running out of the corn. Right here at the end comes the wind 
See the dust back there? Big old dust cloud. Let's go. Let's go. Got some dust blowing on the driveways at the farm. Let's go. Rain. Windy. Where's the rain? Come on, rain. Here it comes. Here it comes. All right. It's time for me not to sit here anymore. All right. Let's go in the house, children's. Yeah, no. Oh, I hope it amounts to something. Well, we got a quick quarter of an inch out of it here, which is helpful. I was hoping we'd get a little bit more, but we'll take our quarter of an inch with a couple more chances of rain in the next few days. Um, more importantly, we had almost seven tenths down to Berkey, and it is much drier there than here. So uh, that's a lifesaver at Berkey and is going to help a lot. Good morning. After last night's rain, we're out here in a cornfield. Just trying to look at stuff. Uh, this is the irrigated field. We're actually going out to check on uh, the uh, rain machine. It's in that path that it was in when it kind of got all wonky the other day, uh, last week, and the GPS went out of it, and we were running over corn. So I just wanted to go out and check on it, make sure that it's uh, it's not getting caught on anything, it's not getting tangled up, um, everything's still running correctly. It's wet out here. I thought about shutting it off last night. We got about a quarter of an inch of rain, um, but I decided to let it go. And yeah, it's uh, it's it's wet now. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. As long as we're not getting too much mud build up on the tires, we're gonna just let it keep running. The corn stalks tied up on our drop there. Okay. Yeah, a little bit of mud. It's not bad. Yeah, these tires are fine. It moves so slow, but yet it's so fast when you're standing right next to it. Okay, I'm just gonna check everything out here real quick. All right, well. I think it all looks good. Man, that's a lot of water. So you can see what? This was two tenths of rain overnight. There's adding another three tenths, but banding it and making it wet. It's good. This corn's going to soak it up. We're firing a little bit more out here in this particular spot. So it needs it. And our drops on the back of the machine. This has not been watered in a long time because this is the pass where things broke on us on Thursday last week, or Friday, I guess it was, Thursday night, Friday morning. Um, and then by the time we got it fixed, we were kind of in a hurry to get the machine over to where you guys could see it on the north side of the field over there. Uh, this pass and everything that way didn't actually get, hasn't actually gotten water since we started it back up a week and a week ago, a week and a day ago, but it's gonna get it today. So next up on today's agenda, I have a uh, group of potential dealers, somebody, I don't know, my agronomist and some of the seed company people were bringing a group of people to walk the plots here this morning. They should start getting here any minute. Um, so we're gonna hang out here. I guess we're doing lunch. So I guess a good thing I got tables and chairs all set up, ready to go. Uh, Brock just got here this morning. He is down at the farm. I asked him to keep cleaning up in the shop bench, um, back of the shop walls all the stuff needs cleaned and uh, then all of these tables and chairs can go down there so we might work on that this afternoon um, yeah well it's like field day 2.0 here we had a whole big group of guys 10 or 11 of us and um, check out the plots we had lunch they want to go over and check out my high management plot over here around the corner because um, some of the stuff that we did there. So we're gonna go do that and then they all wanna go up and see the rain, which is a half a mile from the road right now and as far away as you can possibly get uh, from being viewable. So we're gonna go do this and then head up there and hopefully it's a little bit more accessible. 
there they go, last of them. So we're taking the leftover pizza in the house, and then we're gonna go down and see how Brock's doing at the farm. Although he called me, so he had a fire call, so I don't know if he's back yet. Well, we got done uh, doing the plot stuff there and showing people around today, so I thought I'd come over to the field where Dad's been working. Looks like he's cutting trees down right now. Uh, but he put a little waterway in here, uh, or just did some surface dirt work to get the water to drain better, I guess. I thought I'd show you what's going on. So this was a wheat field that we combined this year. Um, we have a standpipe there that gets water down into the tile that goes across the road. We also have a culvert right there that gets water across the road to that um, waterway that goes back to some low ground back there that we don't farm, haven't ever farmed. Um, but there was just a little bit of a ridge in here that dad kind of graded the dirt off and he had his laser set up over there so we could make sure we got grade on this just to help get the surface water to flow off the field a little bit better. There's water that comes out of these trees back here in the long woods and it makes those back end rows uh, pretty wet sometimes. And so we wanted to try and uh, help that drain a little bit better. This farm is tiled. We own this, bought it, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago or so. And it's tiled, I'm guessing on 35 foot, or 30 foot spacings. Um, so pretty well but we get so much bleed off water coming out of the woods that sometimes it, it, it makes these ends really wet. Plus they're shaded, they don't dry out real well. And if you can get the surface water off, like this, it will certainly help dry that stuff out. So that's good. I also know there's a standpipe down there a little ways to bring get that water coming out of the woods and uh, cut it off before it gets there. Dad was talking about putting another one in down here somewhere. He's cutting trees back, trying to just clean up the edges here a little bit. So, looks good. Here, we'll watch him cut this one down. Ugh. Looks like he's finding some logs. That one's leaning pretty hard. Timber. There you go. Yeah, gaining a lot here. You can see all of that. The old edge of the field is like clear out here. So that'll be helpful. Okay, that's good. We're good here. Well, Brock never came back. Uh, he had a fire call, I guess, after lunch, and he never came back. So that's all right. He was cleaning up our bench, look, got this all nice and shined up up there, so that's good. Kind of trying to, we, we tend to just throw stuff down here and it gets accumulated and then we end up with piles of just broken junk. Like, we just throw it away. Just throw this away. A broken crowbar. Just throw it away. We, it's no good. Um, another one. Another broken extension magnet light thing. I don't know. Throw them away. Uh, so we're we're trying to go through this and get it all cleaned up as best we can. It's going to take a little while. The rest of the shop, however, eh, it's not in too bad a shape, especially that corner over there. Um, yeah, we've got a we've got an event coming up, as I've told you, and we'll tell you more details maybe tomorrow. Um, but I'm going to go home for today. Not super productive couple of days here, but it's okay. It's been hot. It's not fun. We did get a little rain. That helps. Hopefully we'll get a little more. doesn't look like today or tomorrow, but uh, maybe on Friday there. So we'll see. Then it's going to cool down next week. That'll be good. After Labor Day, things are fixing to get real busy. I suppose I should shut this door back here. Um, we're going to have to get some tillage equipment hooked up. We're going to have to do a little bit of work on the bean head. We need to replace a couple of skid plates underneath there. Uh, we got to get the air seeder around and just make sure that that is ready for planting wheat um, and harvest is coming really quickly so tomorrow's plan is to drive around and go do some of our yield estimates we're going to make a yield estimating video tomorrow we're going to go to uh, several cornfields three four five cornfields we're going to take a tape measure we're going to count ears we're going to pull three or four ears five ears from each uh, spot that we do it Maybe do a couple spots in each field, maybe not, and uh, try and get some kind of yield estimates. I'll show you the process for that. I've got a nice little 
uh, Google Sheets calculator that works really well for just punching the numbers in and it spits out a couple of different um, calculations that give me a pretty decent idea where our yields are going to be. Uh, we're going to look at some of our good corn. We'll probably go up and do our irrigated stuff. We'll look at some of our other good corn here. And then we're going to go look at some really crappy looking stuff. So we'll hit a wide range tomorrow. We have a cornfield that was one of the early planted ones. It's 106 day corn, which is on the earlier side for me that um, it's pretty well dead at this point. And I don't think it's tar spot. We sprayed it. I need to go and look and make sure that it's not a ton of tar spot out there. And that's part of the reason we're going to go tomorrow. Um, but it is to the south where we've been much drier. And I think it's just died from the heat and the dry weather earlier this week. So, um, yeah, we get, to, we get to look into that a little bit tomorrow. Uh, should be a long, good day of crop scouting. And hopefully we can get started semi-early in the morning after it's dry, but before it gets hot. So um, that one will be a little better. And then we got Labor Day weekend coming up and uh, all the cousins are coming. All kinds of good stuff going on. So have a good night. Thanks for watching this one. I promise things pick up after Labor Day.